Welcome back, Atari fans. Several of you have been asking me where to get the FujiNet device. I'm here to tell you. www.vintagecomputercenter.com slash FujiNet. I'll have a link down in the description. Gavin over there is producing these as fast as he can. The orders are coming in fast and furious, and he's guaranteed me that he is expeditedly shipping these as soon as he's able to turn those around. So order one today and possibly get one before Christmas. With that being said, let's talk about... Uh, some of you have asked me where to get a copy of that games.atr disk image that I featured in the last video where I was actually loading up some games from the Fuji, uh, the FujiNet device on the SD card. I had that disk image that said games.atr. Uh, if you go to my website, www.8bitandmore.com slash downloads, I think it's downloads. You can go to the main page and click on downloads. I've included that disk image there towards the top. I think it's called games.atr. You can download that disk image, place it on the SD drive of the FujiNet, and uh, boot the FujiNet, and you'll be able to mount that disk image and play all those fancy games. Um, I've got some more t-shirts designed if you guys are interested. Um, you go to my website, 8bitandmore.com, and um, check out the apparel down there at the bottom. It helps support the channel. I'm not looking to get rich off it, but I'd like to see a few of those out in the wild at trade shows and some other events. In the last video, I showed you my FujiNet device, which is a very early prototype, but it wasn't labeled, so I wanted you guys to see what I had done. I had labeled the three LEDs on the front of the device so that you see what they actually do. The first one is... Um, stands for Wi-Fi. That lets you know whether or not you're connected to your Wi-Fi network. The second one lights up when the Bluetooth is enabled. And the third one is an amber LED that blinks on and off as the activity on the FujiNet, um, the SIO port, um, as it's getting data reading and writing, you'll see that blink. And at the top, we've got three buttons like we talked about last time, A, B, and reset. Um, you're gonna see today, we're gonna use the A button. Um, today, we're actually gonna talk about um, disk rotation. Now. Back in the day, there were games and programs that were written that required uh, multiple disks to be used. In other words, they used multiple disks. Like, for example, what we're going to look at today, Ultima 4, Quest of the Avatar, was a four floppy disk set for the game. And um, during the gameplay, it would prompt you to insert, you know, the game disk or the program disk or the town disk, you know, one of those four floppies. And uh, since we don't have the floppies, we've got the four disk images, we're going to mount those four disk images on the FujiNet virtual drives D1, D2, D3, and D4. And we're going to use this A button here, which has a really cool feature, which allows you to rotate the disks in that sequence. So for example, if you've got disk one, disk two, disk three, disk four, you start off by playing with disk one, you load the game, you do a little bit of gameplay, and then it, pro it finally comes up and says insert disk two. What we're going to do is we're going to press the A button briefly and you're going to hear the FujiNet device speak to you using SAM, which is another thing we're going to get into in another video, the SAM. This thing supports SAM and for those that don't know what SAM is, SAM is the library that allows your Atari computer to talk what you type. In other words, you can type words and it repeats it back to you in that real archaic computer voice. You'll see when we get there. But anyway, during the gameplay, we're going to press the A button and you're going to, you're going to hear it say disc one, disc two, disc three, disc four. That's going to signify which disc is now in quote unquote drive one or the floppy drive. So if we have D1, D2, D3, D4, and we hit the A button, D4 is going to go to D3, D3 is going to go to D2, D2 is going to D1, and D1 is going to rotate to D4. If that's confusing, don't worry about it. I'm going to show you how it works. So stick around. Don't go anywhere. It's going to be good. Don't go anywhere. All right, so let's start off by booting the Atari 8-bit using the FujiNet. And we're going to come up to our config program where we are going to be able to mount the four Ultima disk images so that we can then boot the game. And I'll show you how we do that right now. So you can see down here at the bottom, I've got my four, or I've got my eight virtual drive slots, they are empty. And up here, I'm gonna go into my SD card, and I've got a folder on my SD card already set up called ATR Games. And under ATR Games, I've got games that start with U, 
and I've got the four disks for the Ultima game. And you can see here we've got the program disk, we've got the Britannia disk, and the town disk, and the underworld. And I know that in the order that they came, the program disk is disk one, Britannia disk two, uh, town is disk three, and the underworld is disk four. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the first uh, disk, which is the program disk, and I'm going to mount that under drive one. Now I want you to notice that I am going to be mounting these discs as read-write because I know that this game, um, during different uh, parts of the game, it saves the game state to the discs. So I always mount these discs read-write. And now we're going to mount the second one, which is Britannia. I happen to know that that needs to be in, in disc number two. That's going to be also read-write. I'm going to take the town disc and I'm going to mount that in the third drive as read-write. And then I'm going to take the Underworld disk and I'm going to mount that under drive number four as read-write. So now what do we have? You can see that we've got disk one mounted in drive one, disk two mounted in drive two, disk three mounted in drive three, and disk three mounted in drive four. Now keep in mind, this game was not particularly designed to work with four floppy disks. But the way that FujiNet works, we can mount all of these as disk drives. And then when it comes time to play the game, we're going to hit the rotate disk button, which will then shift the disks around to where uh, the appropriate disk will be in drive one that the game thinks is available. So let's go ahead and press the option key to boot the FujiNet device. And as you can see, we're loading Ultima 4 Quest of the Avatar, copyright 1985 Origin Systems Incorporated. We'll probably do a video one day, I'm thinking on uh, the gameplay of this, where maybe we'll do a Twitch live game broadcast where we will play through this entire game, or at least try to. It's one of the better adventure games for the Atari. All right, so I'm gonna kind of fast forward us through this and get us to the point where it actually asks for the disc swapping to save you guys some time, so stand by. This opening part of the game, it takes you through a little bit of your journey through uh, the prelog of the game. It tells you a little bit about, you know, the towns and, um, you know, what your goal is going to be. All right, so now we've gotten to the point where it's asking me to insert the Britannia disk into drive one. Now, we know that we have our program disk in drive one, and I know that the Britannia disk is in drive two. All right, so let's focus our attention down here to the FujiNet device. And as you can see right here, we've got our button A. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press the A button, and I want you to listen to what the computer says when we press the A button. <laughs> Did you guys hear that? If you guys didn't hear that, I'm going to press the button again. It's going to say, it, what it said was disc two. I'm going to press it again to where it says disc three. Okay, that was disc three. I'm going to press it one more time. That was disc four. So I'm going to press it one more time and it'll be back to where we started. So right now, it's as if we started. Disk 1 is in disk 1, disk 2 is in disk drive 2, etc. So I'm going to press this again so that the Britannia disk, which is in drive 2, becomes disk 1. So now I'm going to press the escape key. And there we go. We are back to our gameplay. All right. So as you guys can see now, we're in the game. We're playing. We can enter the town. And you can see now as I enter the town, it's prompting me to once again, place a please place the town disc into drive one. Now, if you guys remember, I had the town disc originally 
mounted as disk three. Well, right now it's in drive two because we already did one rotation. So let's go ahead and do another rotation. So now our disk three, which is our town disk, is in our, what the game thinks is in drive one. Let's press escape. And you can see the game continues knowing no better or no worse. All right, pretty cool, right? All right, so we're back at our Fujinet screen. We're gonna do another test of the disc swap button. This time we're gonna choose Ballyhoo, a text adventure game that, that came on a single floppy, but it was a, a front and an A and B side. And we're gonna simulate that. So we're gonna go in here and I think it's under, Yeah, so Ballyhoo A is the side A of the disc. We're gonna mount that into the first drive. And then we're gonna take the side B of that floppy disc and mount it into the second drive. So let's go ahead now and boot the Fujinet. And what we're doing is we're booting side A of the game disc. The story is loading. And now you can see it says insert, to insert side two of the story disk into drive one. Now, we obviously don't have that disk in there. So if we just press enter and start to continue, you see the internal error we got, end of session? That was because I didn't swap the drives. So that's pretty much toast. So let's reboot. All right, so this time we're gonna go ahead and hit the A button. You can hear the Fujinet told us and it's now disc two. Press enter. And now the game continues to load like it's supposed to. All right, so that's all I wanted to show you guys today. I wanted to get you familiar with the disc rotate. And remember what this is doing is it's rotating the discs that you have mounted in a circular fashion so that you can ultimately get to the disc you need. All right, guys, stay tuned. Got another video coming here shortly where we're gonna continue exploring the Fujinet and become masters of the device. See you soon.